Now, it could very easily be argued that the 80s was kind of a golden age when it came to horror movies. Whether it be the slasher films like the Friday 13ths or the uh, Halloweens or movies like the, you know, the Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street, these movies were uh, so ingrained in our cultures that uh, people who liked, kids who liked horror movies, went and rented them time and time again. Yeah, we'd wind up renting the movies two and three and four times. Um, I was one of those kids and uh, Reanimator was one of those movies that uh, I wound up uh, renting obsessively. Now along with movies like The Toxic Avenger or The Return of the Living Dead, I would argue that a movie like Reanimator really helped create a template for a special kind of horror movie. Uh, the type that mixes camp and comedy along with over-the-top gore and uh, violence. Now the score to a movie is supposed to help create a mood, help set the tone for a movie. And I would argue that it's doubly so when it comes to horror movies, you know. Uh, they're supposed to create a certain tension or in the case of this movie, because there's those campy elements, you know, it's supposed to be reflected in the music and we hear it in spades here. Now there's the difference between the nostalgia of having watched the movie a dozen times growing up or watching it for the first time on YouTube and actually going out and uh, spending the money to get uh, the soundtrack on uh, vinyl. And Waxworks does what it has to in order to make the purchase worthwhile. Now from the incredible album cover art which was put together specifically for this vinyl release by Gary Pullen to the printed inner sleeve which features liner notes by both the composer and the director of the movie, we can see that it's a quality product through and through. There were two variations of the vinyl, mine being a green splatter, although you don't really see much splatter, but just green splatter, but there were glow-in-the-dark vinyl uh, that were also placed uh, randomly in the orders, in the mail orders, so if you're lucky you might uh, wind up getting a glow-in-the-dark cover. Add to that this 18 by 24 poster, you can see that a lot of meticulous care was put into presenting a very nice package and making it so that uh, whatever money you spent on the record you feel was money well spent. Now as far as picking apart the music or providing some kind of uh, analysis of what it is that you'll be listening to, my only suggestion is go to YouTube, watch the movie, and you can see what an integral part the soundtrack plays to the movie itself, and uh, I would think that the soundtrack would sell itself at that point. One thing that can be said, and it's actually even mentioned in the liner notes, is that um, composer Richard Band um, pretty much lifts uh, a good part of the main theme directly from Bernard Herrmann's Psycho. So, uh, you know, it could be argued that it's a homage to Psycho and Bernard Herrmann. I would say that it's pretty much almost stealing. The thing is, is that if the whole soundtrack just revolved around just that theme, it would be one thing. What it is that you'll find here is that it's a solid soundtrack through and through. I would say very simply, if you like horror movies, if you like music filled with tension, if you like uh, great sounding uh, soundtracks, and if you're a collector of soundtracks, you're not going to go wrong here. Money well spent.